Welcome to E39 Source, Ryan Schultz here with the 2002 330 Xi. We're going to be working on the rear suspension today. Uh, it is very well known to me at this point that uh, both rear shocks are totally blown. So we're going to be replacing rear shocks as well as the springs and associated hardware. All of these parts came from FCP Euro. We'll include the part numbers as we utilize them today throughout the DIY. Uh, per usual with suspension jobs, we're going to start up, start off using a Jack and jack stands, this is an XI, so I just put it in gear. The front wheels would hold it from rolling. I would absolutely recommend you use a brick or wheel chocks though in the front since we're gonna move the back up off the ground. We're gonna use this low profile, I believe it's a Harbor Freight two or three ton jack. Um, use the center differential as the center jack point. Jack it up until the rear wheels are off the ground and then use stands on the uh, chassis right in front of the rear wheels. Should be noted before you get the car off the ground, you want to loosen up your uh, studs with a 17 millimeter uh, socket. Not, they shouldn't be very hard to get on and off if they're torqued to spec, but uh, just break them loose, don't take them all the way off, and then uh, jack the car up. With the wheels off the car and the car in the air, we're gonna start in the trunk. We need to get to the uh, shock towers here where the top mount is, so we're gonna need to remove some carpeting in the back. To start off, I've just lifted off the main piece that covers your spare tire, set that aside. Then we're gonna work on removing these little storage trays. They're held in with these plastic clips like about everything else on these cars. So pop those out with a screwdriver or pry tool or something like that. There's gonna be two on each side. We'll get those panels out of the way and go from there. So removing the uh, interior trunk trim on the left side, we've kind of already done it. I'm gonna give you a little DIY at this point on the right side. Up top, we have this plastic Rivet, it's a screw, it's got a, a flat blade head on it, so I'm just gonna shove a screwdriver in there, give it probably a quarter turn counter. You may even just use your fingers. And uh, look around for any other clips that your car has. This thing's missing most of them and I don't care to replace them. But uh, yeah, remove any other clips with a screwdriver or a pry tool and we'll show you from there. Once it's been determined that nothing else is holding it in, we do have this little hook here. Just pull it up above the hook like that. And then it's gonna pull out away from behind the tail light. And at this point, we can move into the car. If you've got split folds, pull that. That's gonna make it a lot easier. Then once inside, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side as I did the other. We're gonna move the seat belt out of the way. This big piece of uh, leather seat, if we get access to the left side, the outside of the car and pull out, it will completely remove itself from the vehicle. Note that the fastening clip stays in the car. You'll have to depress a little tab on that and work it out and then replace it inside the seat. Press it back inside the seat panel, just a bunch of plastic clips. It'll click and then we'll be able to pull the rest of the carpet out of the way and on the inside of the car so we don't have to fight it in the trunk. Gaining access to the strut towers here is a little honky. We've got all this material in the way. It's old. This is an 02. It's a production 9 or 10 of 01 car. I think it's a 901 02 model year. This stuff's been in here a long time. This particular vehicle has 219,800 miles on it. Um, you can try to remove it. Be my guest. Take the airbag module off. Deal with all these wires. You know, it's got this plastic trim here for the battery. It would be a nightmare to try to remove this thing right. I don't quite frankly care enough. So take a flat blade screwdriver, barely touch it. The stuff is so brittle, it flakes off like this and just gets to be a big mess. So break off enough. All you really need to do here is gain access to the two likely 13 millimeter bolts that hold the strut top uh, mount in place. And then we're just gonna be pulling this whole thing out from the bottom of the car in about five minutes. Do the same on the other side. Starting for disassembly, we're on the driver's side of the vehicle. On the inside bottom of your strut or shock, we have an 18 millimeter bolt that goes through the entire bottom mount of the shock assembly and then into your wheel carrier. So this bolt's probably pretty tight. I'm fairly certain that my uh, shocks in these car and this car is original on 219,000 miles and what is it now, 13 years old. So we've got ourselves a half inch drive, six point impact, 18 millimeter socket as well as a 18 inch breaker bar and then I've got about a four foot piece of pipe. So get that bolt working out and that's going to be the first part. Oh boy. All right. Now that's the release. Here's the 18 millimeter nut 
end up with a half inch drive ratchet, work that out, take it out, throw it away, replace it. Um, now that the shock is nice and loose, we are gonna have a little bit of a, of a jolt when uh, the wheel carrier assembly comes down here. You'll notice it's just gonna be nice and springy right now, held in mostly by the spring and this um, rear trailing arm. So if we're gonna do the springs as well, here's how that's gonna work. Uh, we're probably gonna need to use, like I did on the other side, the jack that comes in the trunk. Um, in theory, you should just be able to push down on this, have Buddy push down on this wheel assembly. We're just gonna reach in and move the spring out. It's held in by kind of a nipple on top, a nipple on bottom. There's also a gasket on the bottom, as well as a gasket on the top that prevents any uh, insane rubbing or noises or anything like that. And then we're just gonna lift it out. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to do that myself. I'll show you how I'm gonna use the jack to get some more room to pull that out. So the first step back here to use the jack that comes in your trunk to kind of push the entire assembly down, we need to move um, out of harm's way your speed, uh, your wheel speed sensor. So it's just clipped onto the trailing arm with a couple plastic clips, pry those up with your fingers or a screwdriver, and push that out of the way. We don't want to sandwich that in between the jack and the, and the trailing arm. So we're gonna take the bottom part, get it on that trailing arm. Top part is gonna come up here to the subframe or chassis or whatever's there that's fairly strong. We're not putting a ton of force on this. Um, probably a couple hundred pounds though. So get that lined up well, and then just turn it with your hand until we have enough room to move the spring out. So I jacked this, I got the whole assembly down maybe two or three inches. And at this point, the spring is gonna get real loose in there. We're gonna wanna lift it up and off of its top nipple and then just pull it out, just like that. The whole thing's kinda gonna fall out of the way. So the top mounts on top, bottom mounts on the bottom, bottom one's a lot thinner. Uh, they're pretty well stuck in the spring. Unless you need to reuse them, I would just leave it all in there and throw this whole thing away. Um, if you are going to reuse them, pry them out, clean them up, and uh, seat them in the new spring in the appropriate location. Well, this is out, now's a great time to clean out this arm. Uh, just use some, uh, some shop towels in there, maybe some degreaser if you care enough. Just clean that out around the nipple. Same thing on the top, although the top isn't nearly as dirty. Clean that up. We're gonna put our new spring in there with the proper pads and then uh, relieve the tension with the car jack. This is our new spring. We'll try to get a part number in a moment. All these parts are from FCP Euro, so it's a suplex part. Notice it's got a sticker on it. It points to the top, and we're gonna leave that sticker on the outside, so that tells you the orientation. Our new bottom mount is in the bottom. Top mount is in the top. We're gonna seat the top mount first. Spring seated on top first, then you'll be able to pull up the rubber boot in the bottom while you slide it over that bottom nipple. Get it aligned how you wish, and then you can start relieving pressure on the jack. Um, maybe go about 20 or 30 turns, or maybe halfway, a third of the way, and kind of make sure it's seating properly. You don't want that to get um, screwed up. So it looks like mine's seated very well. Make sure that's tight, and then we're just going to remove this jack altogether before reinstalling the shock assembly. Okay, so to remove the strut from the top, all you have to do is simply remove these two 13 millimeter bolts right there, uh, back them out slowly, and it will drop down. This is the OEM sack strut or shock for the uh, rear right side. The part number is going to be 8149015568882. This is going to be on the inside of the car. This is where that big uh, 13. 15, 17 millimeter bolt is going to uh, hold the strut onto the wheel carrier. Doesn't really matter, both rear struts or shocks are the same part number, but just the orientation of the stickers is gonna depend on which one you use. It really doesn't matter if you're picky, go ahead and do that. So we're gonna start with our shock, then we've gotta build it into a similar setup as the other one with mounts, collars, washers, um, and the dust boot, just like the other one. So first thing, take off this bolt on top. It's a 17 millimeter bolt that threads onto your shock. Take that off, put that in a dry safe location. The next two things we're gonna need are the, uh, the dust boot, which has a part number of 33521136283. We're gonna need quantity two of those. Again, we're just doing one side assembly on camera, so we need one of those per side. Then we need the bump stop, as I'm gonna call it. This is made by Rain Automotive. It's essentially the OEM. Um, 33531136395. We also have a top and lower mount for the spring. That's kind of a separate job, um, but there are two mounts for the spring that we'll detail in a moment. And then we have our strut top mount, which is 33521092362. Starting with the dust boot and the bump stop, we're gonna take this part here, note the two grooves, thicker one in the middle. 
and we're gonna take this part, take the pointed top, and we're gonna fit these together. This lip or rim right here is gonna fit inside there. So maybe get one side in first. It's gonna take some pushing, and it's gonna snap into place like that. Then take our strut, slide this down, keep going, push, push, get that out of the way. Next part we need, again, we're gonna need quantity two, but just for one side, quantity one, 33525762328. Three, five, two, five, two, three, two, it's a larger washer like this. And we're gonna put that on cup side down towards the bottom of the car. We now have the strut mount that comes with a gasket. If it doesn't come with a gasket, get a gasket. I'll be nice, here's the part number. It's 33576777864. Three, five, Seven 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 eight six four. It's hard to read this writing. If that isn't right, I'll annotate it below. We're gonna take the uh, mount with the gasket, slide it down over the top. It will be able to move the whole time, even when everything's tight. So don't worry about orientating it. Then we have a smaller um, washer right here that is gonna go on this way, cup up, so it uh, kind of seats down in the top of the mount like that. Part number for that top washer is 37575758999. Again, if that isn't right, I will annotate it and there'll be a full list of parts required for this job in the description below the video. Now with that on there, we can go ahead and secure our top nut again. And this gets a little complicated in the way we just need to thread it on by hand until it gets tight. Then we're gonna make use of two tools. We're gonna use a open-ended spanner, it's a 17 millimeter. Seat that on the bolt first. Then you can either use uh, whatever size that is, use a wrench, or in this case, we're just gonna use a pair of vice grips adjusted to the proper size to clamp down on the top, have somebody else counter hold that, and then tighten it until it stops tightening. This is the final setup. Uh, we're gonna film uh, the installation on the right side. Uh, so we're gonna have at the bottom, the collar for the uh, bolt that's gonna hold it onto the wheel carrier on the inside, pointing in towards the center of the car. Then we're just gonna feed it up, get these two studs through the interior holes again, and then we're gonna to torque down our 13 millimeter bolts that hold it in the car before finally replacing the larger, I believe, 16 millimeter bolt that holds it in the wheel carrier. We're gonna do a comparison. This is the old one after presumably around 220,000 miles. Um, I'm gonna fully extend it right there. I mean, it pretty much falls down to a point and then you can push it a little more down to its its fully compressed position and note that it does not rebound at all it's bad so up with the old and with the new we'll do the same thing pull it out to its fully uncompressed position gotta push it a lot harder and you can't see up here down there it's rebounding that dust shield kind of protects that so a huge difference. It's a lot harder to push and it rebounds itself. So if you can follow me over to the car, we're going to start from the wheel well, making sure that uh, this metal piece is going to point outwards. These two posts are going to go through the appropriate holes that we just removed them from. Um, note that there needs to be a gasket on there. In fact, this has fallen off. The old one was still in the car, so get rid of the old one. Let's find our new one and install it. With the strut connected inside the car, there's two new bolts up uh, holding the mount into the body or the chassis of the car. We need to move up the um, wheel assembly so that we can bolt the strut back onto it. So we're just gonna use this floor jack on the bottom um, of just behind the rotor. You might have somebody else kind of tell you when it's enough, otherwise you're gonna make a few trips back and forth. You can kind of compress the spring a little bit or the strut a little bit to make it uh, longer or shorter, um, but we're just gonna line that up and then tighten that bolt back up again. If you're looking to replace the two bolts that uh, hold the shocks into the wheel carrier, that is the part number, and from FCP it's quite difficult to read. Um, I'll put it in the description below. With everything all done and ready to put the wheels back on, this is what it should look like. You should have no gapping here around the spring. You wanna make sure everything seats up properly there. We uh, replaced the bottom bolt here into the carrier for the new shock. And that's what things look like up top. These are the springs that I ended up going with. Suplex mini block springs. And a specific part number appears to be 06164.
So we're all finished. Uh, once everything's tightened up down there, feel free to open your trunk. Make sure those two 13 millimeter nuts on each side for the strut tower get tightened back down. Um, put your carpeting back together, fold up your split folds. Wheel lug torque is 89 pound feet per wheel lug. I would recommend that you put the wheels on there, kind of thread the bolts in by hand while the car's still up in the air. Jack it up a little bit, remove your stands, lower it, and torque those down to spec. You should be done. Um, huge difference. I immediately noticed when I drove this car, the back end actually feels planted to the ground now. It is a uh, vast improvement over what it was before. And as you can see here in Ohio, we still have a lot of snow, but it's uh, into March now and it uh, should be disappearing soon. It's 50 degrees and quite nice. The car got a little dirty driving it today, but huge improvement over the uh, old original equipment. So thanks for watching the DIY. If you have any questions, um, leave them below and be sure to check the description for all the specific parts, at least for a 2002 E46 330XI sedan. Thanks and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.